Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Blessed be to the name of Jesus that we love with our whole, whole heart. Amen. Praise God. Welcome this morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning. Amen. I hope you can hear me right now. I know you can't see me. There we go. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be to Thank the name you, of Jesus. Jesus. Love with our whole, whole Got a little heart. feedback. Let me let me let me fix that. Okay. It should be all right now. Praise God. This is Celebration Sunday because this is Holy Ghost Sunday. This is Holy Spirit Sunday. This is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. This is about 50 days, not necessarily on the Jewish calendar, but 50 days from the time where we celebrated Easter. We celebrated the resurrection. Jesus said, I'm coming back. He came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. He came back with the, uh, in doing his church, setting up the church, hallelujah, establishing the body of Christ where he said, I'm coming to take up residence in your life. I'm coming to, you know what? I'm coming to stay. You can't kick me out now. I'm coming into your life. I'm coming to save, deliver, set you free. I'm coming to help you to become everything I intended on you to be, praise God. This is Resurrection Sunday in its best in the fact that this Sunday, amen, the spirit has come to the church, amen. This is Pentecost Sunday. And I tell you, I said resurrection, but this is Pentecost Sunday, but everything in you ought to be resurrected. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are y'all doing out there? Hallelujah, praise God, praise God. I wanna shout out, amen, to number one, amen, Prophet Kim, bless you, bless you. I'm telling you, Prophet Kim had a word the other day. She went streaming live. And uh, it was a word, amen. Um, Prophet, I don't know if you can put it in the chat where you can share the link of that word with other people. But I'm telling you, it was about, it was a good word about, I guess, expanding your wings. That's all I'm going to give you. Expanding your wings. If, if Prophet is listening to me, uh, you know, we'll get that word to you. It's on the YouTube streaming live. Probably that was her first time streaming live. That ain't her thing. Oh my God. I'm telling you, I got a little light back there. Hold on y'all. Just y'all, excuse me. I'm going to get that little light out your eyes in just a minute. Hold on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Amen. Now the light is out. And you should, I, yeah, I know you guys thought that was my halo, but no, that's not my halo. I don't have that kind of halo. So sorry to disappoint you. Good morning. Good morning, Coach Lawrence, Minister Lawrence. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Don. Amen. Don won. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> How you doing, Don? Good to see you. Amen. Hutch, Hutch, amazing Hutch, Heavenly Hutch, God bless you. Thank you for coming this morning. I want to say hello to also back up and say, what's up, Angel, because I don't see your name in the chat. And you know what? All of us ought to have really all our different ways to chime in. I know some of us watch this um, together on a, probably a big screen in our house and, you know, but you should still get on your phone and find a way to come in so you can chat and express yourself. But I want to give a shout out to Angel, uh, Lawrence's wife. Amen. I uh, want to let you know we appreciate you guys. You guys are out of town, but, you know, you live out of town, but you're coming back. I know you are in Jesus name. You're coming back. You're on a mission where you're going. 
Amen. 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 Tangela. Tangela is back, y'all. Tangela. Tangela is back. Everybody give Tangela a shout out. Amen. Tangela. We miss you, Tangela. Tangela's handling family business and taking care of things like that. God bless you. Good to see you back and well and ready. Thank you, Prophet, for putting that in there. Women Ministry TV um, is where you go. It's That's where you go on YouTube. Uh, Women's Ministry TV. Uh, <laughs> Don said allegedly. Uh, praise God. Hey, if you're not in the chat, I can't see you, so you need to be chatting if you want me to say something to you. I see my friend Wayne here earlier. God bless you for coming. Uh, one of our partners uh, for at Victory. Wayne, good to have you this morning. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, I just wanted to give you a thank you for coming this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, we're going to go ahead and get in the word uh, this morning. Y'all was probably wondering, why in the world he playing, he playing a resurrection Sunday, uh, a resurrection song, you know, an Easter song. Why was that play? Well, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm depicting. Uh, I'm starting at the resurrection, and then we had a Holy Spirit song, and that's the, the progression of the church. Resurrection and then Pentecost Sunday. And so those two songs depicted our process of resurrection. Good morning, James, this morning. Good morning, James. Amen. James Spence, God bless you. Amen for coming this morning. Doing a fantabulous job working for safe staffing, putting all kinds of overtime we want to commend James for doing such a great job. That's our staffing re, uh, agency, and uh, James is doing such a great job. Keep up the good work, James. We're proud of you. Keep on, you know, working hard and and uh, fighting to get your get your life back, fighting to get your your um your your you know your status back. You're doing it. Don't quit. Don't take no shortcuts. Just keep on going, James. God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we're going to get in the word. We're not going to prolong any time, but before we do that, I said, we're not going to prolong any time. Um, but I got a couple of announcements I still need to make before we get in the word. Um, next Sunday, mark your calendar, not next Sunday, but the first Sunday, June the 6th, and we're going to do it. I said last time at 11, we shifting it to one. We're shifting it to one o'clock because we want to give people time to get to church. We are inviting people outside of our circle. People want to come to our church outside of our circle, and uh, we're making it available. Many of them have their own church homes, but they still like to collaborate with us because we're such a reentry church and we are reentry ministry. And they want to collaborate. So we're, we're, we're moving our service from 11 to 1 o'clock on Sunday, starting at June the 6th. Now, I'm talking about starting on June the 6th because we are going to be meeting on a weekly basis in the building. No more streaming here. We will do stream, but we're not, we're not, we're going to be in the building in person Amen. Praise God. It was meant to be for us to be in person. I can't wait to get in person. I actually preach better, I believe, when we're in person because I see your faces and your eyes and, and you help me preach because you, you get in there and say amen and praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you do that, uh, you put a demand on the anointing uh, in our lives. So and we're getting back at it. So invite your friends, family, one o'clock. We're going to start with, actually, we're going to start with having lunch. And I'd like my team to come about 12, you know, so we can get set up. The team needs to come about 12, and I'll let you know who needs to help out and get the food going and all of that, because we want to, we want to, we're reversing really the order of service. We're having lunch first. And then, then keep in mind, we're going to have some some church plus stuff because we want to be 
relevant to our community. One of the things we want to do, Church Plus, we got four big old rooms in that building. And um, this is kind of reminded me of this. We had that song, when Jesus, if Jesus was in the room, what would you do? Uh, well, we got four big old rooms uh, that we're going to be able to designate for certain things. Amen. We're going to have a room there where you can have prayer. Uh, we're going to have, you know, deliverance. We're going to have a time where you can go in that room, whatever you need to get prayer to encourage you for the spiritual. We're going to have a room right after lunch. We're going to have a room for those who need to, you know, work on their relationships and their marriages and things of that nature. Uh, and we're going to have, and, and that's, that's the relationship, the fresh life. We're going to have a room for financial or we may even have split some of these rooms so we can have some of these uh, times where people will be heading up those, those rooms. Amen. And uh, we would try to get guest speakers. Now we're looking at doing that, <clears throat> uh, splitting it off where we have different rooms. We'll have coaching where people can do some coaching. We're really going to get down to it. Amen. We're going to get down to it, the nitty gritty. And we're going to right after, right after uh, lunch, we're going to go ahead and disperse into the rooms. And then we're going to come back and have worship and have the word delivered to us. And we're going to release you for the day. Listen, we'll be out of there before, two, 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 you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock. We'll be out of there. At least about 3 o'clock, we'll be out of there. Amen. You've had church, you've had lunch, you've had a class, you had, you've had fellowship. We're going to have a good time. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you're excited about that. Church Plus is what we're calling it. It's going to be a time of empowerment. It'll be a time where we get together and have a good time. Invite people. That's starting on June the 6th, June the 6th, on first Sunday, June the 6th, uh, we, we ask you to invite your friends. God bless you. Let us pray and ask God to uh, just really um, decrease me and increase his word through me uh, and, and, and decrease you so he can increase his word in you. All right, let us pray. Father, we just come to you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, your provisions for today. We thank you for all things. You're so good, God. And Lord, we ask that you will anoint this word, that you will bless your people. Thank you for those that are here, but yet, even not yet, not here, going to chime in later. But Lord, we pray that we don't miss a beat. I pray that they get it. I pray that I would be able to deliver it so they can get it in a way that is very clear. Thank you. We love you. We give you praise. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we do have uh, the notes here if you want to chime in, but I want you to turn in your Bibles uh, to a passage of Scripture, an unfamiliar passage of Scripture in Ezra. E-Z-R-A, Ezra, chapter four. You can use the Bible on the platform here, if you would like. Ezra, chapter four. We're looking at four through five. And then you can also, if we get time, go into Haggai. I call it Haggai. Um, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. You may have another pronouncing of it, but it's Haggai to me. Uh, it's actually the passage of scripture that led me to uh, led me to the calling. Hey, God, chapter one, verse two through eleven, and then we'll look at one and fifteen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Um, meanwhile, also before I get into the message, uh, you know, feel free to um, we have on the platform where you can be able to give and. And, and things of that nature, just want to give you a chance to do that because sometimes, a lot of times at the end of the service, everybody's rushing out and the service may end, you won't have to get a chance to do that. But you can, you can uh, text to give, um, you can text the amount to 84321, or you can also um, 
you can uh, you can click on the link and set yourself up a portal where you can give on a regular basis unto the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Last week, we started a series called Build Back Better. Still in the title from our president. I like that title because I really see the church at a place where we're trying to rebuild. The church not necessarily being the organization, but the organism. When I'm referring to the church, I'm not referring to necessarily the source church, uh, the victory church, or any church uh, local body. I'm, and it could include that. It could, but I'm not just, I'm not necessarily just talking about the church building or the church organization. I'm talking about the church, the church as an organism. I'm, I'm talking about the church, you being a part of the church, I'm being a part of the church. And so when we're talking about building back better, we're talking about you building yourself up on your most holy faith. And the Bible said, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labors in vain. And so we want to make sure God is a part of this build back better process. Um, I'm changing the title. Well, the title of the message is, uh, the subtitle is Overcoming, Overcoming, Overcoming Stigmata. Overcoming Stigmata. You can write that down, Overcoming Stigma, or stigmata is the plural for stigma. So overcoming stigmas, amen. Um, we're going to identify stigma in the biblical term of shame, amen. We're gonna, so we, when we talk about stigma, stigmata, we're talking about shame because the definition for Stigma, the definition for stigma, um, I have it here, let me get it, uh, is uh, basically to discredit or to shame. Uh, it's to shame someone, to discredit someone, or to, to live a life that is engaged with your failures, your shortcomings. If you live a life dictated by your shortcomings, we know that what happens is that you become imprisoned to the stigma. You get imprisoned to the shame. Amen. But there's a word from the Lord that God wants uh, us to learn from as the children of Israel. And I'm just going to really give a little to help people kind of catch up with where we are from last week, because last week. We were talking about building back better as it relates to the church, the body of Christ, but also that if mama is not happy, then nobody's happy. And if, if really the mother church, the body of Christ is not happy, nobody going to be happy. And we get that. But I want to really kind of, you know, paint the picture or at least set the platform of how we got to where we are. And then we're going to talk about the shame. Stay with me. Amen. Stay with me. Uh, in the passage of scripture, I just gave you in Ezra chapter four, what was going on. I'm going to read, let me read this right here. It says, then the people of the land tried to what? Discourage the people of Judah, Judah being God's chosen people, the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building. They troubled them in building. And hired, they went out of their way to hire counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. Oh, my God. Mm, don't you feel sometimes your purpose is frustrated? Don't you feel sometimes, I know I do feel at times, where there's so much against me, more against me than for me. There are times where we feel 
uh, discouraged because trouble, people are trying to, uh, uh, the enemy is troubling us. Every time we try to rebuild and every time we try to take one step forward, it seems like we get knocked two steps backwards. And this was happening to the children of Israel as they came out of exile, as they came out of prison, sort of equivalent to as, uh, as the church is now coming out of, of um, quarantine, coming out of, you know, being locked down. Seem like the people want to frustrate our anointing, frustrate our purpose. It seems like, amen, there's people working against us to rebuild. Seem like there are hired counselors out there uh, to work against us, amen. And it, and it seemed like it's been going on even pre-COVID. Uh, it, it seems like it was before even the lockdown, but it's been happening for years. And it's because of the troubling that we have still yet, though we come out of prison, though we come out of hiding uh, out of our secret place, though we come out of a place where we've been incarcerated, seems like it's still going on where there's People trying to frustrate our purpose, frustrate our anointing, frustrate our calling. Somebody going to say amen out there and, and give God some praise and let him know because there's a, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. It happened to the children of Israel. It's been happening to the church today. Jerusalem as I said, came out of exile to rebuild the temple, uh, but they, fell, they faced some opposition. The opposition uh, hindered them uh, to rebuilding God's physical temple, but we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. However, God sent a prophet, Haggai, to encourage God's people to get back to work on building the house. Amen. Uh, and, and God's people, however, God's people got so occupied. And this is what happens when you come out of a, 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 you know, out of a prison situation. I'm not just talking about those who got physical prison bars that they came out. I'm talking about when you come out of darkness, when you come out of something, when you come out of an issue, sometimes we get occupied with our issue itself, sometimes we're so uh, inundated with all the pressures around us, we don't take the time to deal, come on, with the issues. We don't have pressures keep us occupied. And that's what happened to the children of Israel. Uh, they had pressures that kept them from rebuilding. They had pressures in their life that occupied them. They had uh, people frustrating their purpose. They had enemies, the enemies coming against them. To, and it took them over 18 years to get back to rebuilding, even though Cyrus gave them a mandate and gave them at least a leeway to go and rebuild. Cyrus gave them the permission to do it. The, Cyrus was the king at the time gave them the king of Persia and gave, released them and gave them favor to go rebuild. They got preoccupied with the everyday demands and expectation and task. How many of you feel so busy? Felt like I felt like I was more busy during the COVID time and even now doing Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting. It seemed like I was always in a meeting Seemed like I was always occupied, and I thought I would have more time for the Lord. So I'm talking to somebody out there. I thought I would have more time for the Lord, but it seemed like I had less time, even though I was locked down. Seemed like you can have more time to get in your word and pray, but because the enemy wants to preoccupy us with so many stresses and 
so many issues and problems and this and that and worries and concern and obligations and demands and things of that nature and, and folk, you know, coming to us, you know, and say, do this and do that and be this and be that and finish this and finish. You've been assaulted with so many other demands and expectation. You and I have not had the time to build on our inner man and build on our spirit, which matters more than anything else. And I'm the only one experiencing that. Somebody needs to say amen or praise God or me too. That's a, you know, you ought to be having a me too movement on this chat because I know I'm not by myself. Amen. Just so many things that occupy us. And I'm probably a little more than most people uh, so busy with these different things because you know, I put so much on me and I take on so much because I have such a joy in doing my work, but that, that did not really help me doing more things just because you're busy does not mean that you're doing kingdom business. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so, you know, listen, the problem is not so much the demands. Let's not excuse it because of the demands. The problem is not necessarily the demands. The problem is our priorities. And if we put our priorities back in order, we can get back to building the body of Christ. We can get back to building us. We can get back to building our spiritual lives and get back to building our relationship with the Lord. However, these are some things that we know we need to do. We need to structure our priorities and set things up in our lives where we get back to the doing the stuff that matters and seeking the kingdom first, putting first things first and uh, the things that matter, put those things out front and start working on them. We know that's happening. But one of the things that frustrate our anointing and frustrate our, our purpose and come against us is these stigmas that are in us. Can I preach today? and begin to minister on this thing called overcoming the stigmata. Now, many of you would say, well, I don't really have any stigmas. You might say, well, I don't have any. I'm, I don't let that stuff bother me wherever I came out of. We got people who come out of prison. We got people who come out of depression. We got folk who come out of, um, uh, uh, of a divorce. There are people that have come out of shame, some type of shame. There's some things that we're not ashamed, we're, that we are ashamed of, and it's considered to be a stigma. Uh, the tricky thing about a stigma is that some people are aware of it and other people are not. Most people are aware of the stigmas that put, people put on them, but we're not always aware of the stigma that we put on ourselves, the limitations that we hinder ourselves with. A lot of times we don't understand that even our flesh um, have certain um, incognito stigmas. And we don't know, you ever, we don't know why we act the way we do, why we respond the way we do. Uh, sometimes we, we ask ourselves, why did you do that? Why, why did you say that? Why you can't control that? You know, and these stigmas are still yet are invisible prisons. Amen. We, we know that in a, in a real way, people come out of prison. There's a prison stigma that, that, is, that is on a, a lot of people come out of prison. They can't get a job or housing or, you know, they, they really um, are struggling with this feeling like a second class citizen, feeling like I'm not really, people don't value me. Hmm, I'm preaching somewhere. I'm coming to your address. I'm coming to your address. I'm getting to your address, amen. I, and even if you don't invite me, I'm coming to your address. There's some of us, amen, that are that are are, are, are really feeling the, the effects of the stigma in our lives. Now, we know stigma is shame. We've all done things in our lives that we're not proud of. We've all made mistakes. We all come short of God's glory. All of us have sinned and come short of his glory. We've all have come to a place where 
we we got some some things in secret that we don't want nobody to know about. If air boy, if that thing got out, man, we will just be, we would just be toe up from the flow up, you know, and we all have those things. But those things, as long as they are allowed to remain in our lives, as long as we uh, uh, continue to allow people to put those stigmas on us, to make us have low self-esteem, uh, those who are feeling uh, bound by certain things that, that you just don't want, you know, afraid to, uh, to feel embarrassed about. So I'm, I'm coming somewhere. I'm coming to some, you know, some folk just, they're bound. They won't do certain things because they, they feel like they're going to be embarrassed. And, uh, and, and folk who, who, who feel like that are incarcerated in a sense because they won't write that, you know, that letter. They won't get on YouTube. They won't uh, um, talk out loud or begin to, um, you know, talk about a particular subject because they are ashamed or they feel like they're going to be embarrassed and it's going to bring undue shame upon them. Mm. Man, I'm telling you, God wants to set us free from the stigmata. He wants to set us free from shame, sickness, and death. Jesus has come to set the church free. In fact, he wants to take your very stigmata and bring it around and make it a success because God specializes. God specializes in taking difficult situations, turning problems into triumphs, turning situations into success. That's the God we serve. God's going to take your shame and make honor out of it. And you don't have to hide. You don't have to, amen, you don't have to cow down to anybody who's trying to put a shame or stigma on you. You can shake it off just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My God, they were, praise God, they were thrown into the burning fire. But Jesus was in there with them, praise God. And guess what? When they came out, uh, they did not smell like smoke. Uh, they did not have the stigma of being thrown into the fiery furnace. Why? Because Jesus was there and he was able to cover them and conceal them from the effects of the fire. And that's what God wants to do for you, praise God. God wants to take your shame and turn it into honor. God wants to take your mistakes and make a message out of it. God wants to take your troubles and trouble your troubles. And he wants to take your stigma and put it under your feet and use it as a badge of honor. I'm telling you, God wants to do it for you. And God, God will do it for you. He has done it because he has already taken our shame to the cross. But don't tell me, baby, it ain't time to build back better. And don't tell me it ain't time, amen, to fix that thing in your life. Don't tell me you can't overcome stigma because he's already done it for you. He's already done it for you. Amen. Some people got the stigma of, I used to be a homosexual and I'm ashamed about I used to be that. Uh, there, there, there are some, some people that, that used to, uh, that did something terribly wrong and they're ashamed about that. And they have that stigma on them. They feel like going to be mocked uh, uh, or considered to be uh, 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 someone lesser than. Just because they made a mistake, there are some prostitutes out there. I'm telling you, I'm talking, can I, can I talk? That may have still some residue of some stigma. But listen, it's time to build a house better because the only way you're going to move forward, the only way you and I are going to move to the next level is that we have to deal with the stigmata. We have to deal with the shame. We cannot let it hinder us from taking positions or going into opportunities. We cannot let fear control us. The fear of being embarrassed, 
We cannot allow our past mistakes to define us. We cannot allow the things that the world is still trying to frustrate our purpose and said, listen, you guys were in prison. You are in exile. You were uh, someone that, that we captured and defeated. We tore down your temple. Come on, church. It's time to build the church back up. It's time to build your temple back up. It's time to walk in your anointing because unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labors in vain. The children of Israel struggled 18 years, 25 centuries ago to rebuild the temple. Uh, amen. The prophet Haggai came and gave them a word from the Lord. God did not want them to live in that shame. He did not want them to live in that stigma. He says, thus speaks the, the Lord of hosts, saying, the people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. This is in Haggai, in Haggai chapter, in, in Haggai chapter, um, chapter one, verse two. The time has not come that the, the time that the Lord's house, when is it going to be time? They, they procrastinated. That's another thing. We need to overcome procrastination. They procrastinated for 18 long years before they start rebuilding. You've been saying, I'm going to take care of this habit and that habit. When is it time for us to rebuild? The word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, it is time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins. No, no, baby. You make some of us make our, our, our house that we live in, put furniture in it and, 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 and rugs and all of that and decorate it and make it look real nice and beautiful. But then we empty, got empty souls and empty spirits and, and empty prayer lives and empty uh, study lives and empty, come on, fasting and just empty, empty, empty. And we, we allow our spiritual lives to go unattended to. God says, he's asked a rhetorical question. Should you, you take care of your own house and forget about my house? Consider your ways. You have so much and bring in little. You, you eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earned wages, earned wages to put it in a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. You know, the reason why we're stuck in a rut, though we're working and we're doing more than we've ever done before, we put more time in and trying to make money and trying to get ahead. We are... Uh, spending so much time on our outer appearance. We're buying ourselves new clothes and new makeup. We're putting on, uh, maybe driving new cars or getting a new job. We're doing all kinds of new stuff. We're doing, we're, we're, we're getting busy, busy, more busier than busy. And then we got other people putting demands on us to, to do certain things. But we need to consider our ways. How much time do we spend with the Lord? How much time do we spend in prayer? How much time do we spend in worship? Some of you looking at your clock right now, Pastor, it's getting kind of late. I'm about, listen here, we consider your ways. Consider your ways because it is the stigma that holds us back. It's the stigma, even today, that is not popular to be a Christian. It's not popular to say that you love Jesus. It's not popular for you to say you worship the Lord. And so what we do, we stay away from the loss because we know that there's a spirit of antichrist out there, but the stigma that has come upon the church because of some, some things that some of us have done to shame the body of Christ, politically shame the body of Christ. And we, we feel that stigma. We don't even want to, too much and mentioned that we're Christian because so many people are mad at Christians today. But baby, don't let, amen, your 
shame or stigma or what happened or what's in politics stop you from worshiping, praising, loving the Lord, going deep in the spirit and rebuilding the house of the temple of God. That is you, praise God. Rebuilding your spiritual life, rebuilding your life. See, let me tell you, and I'm gonna I'm come to a close on this. Let me tell you, uh, in order to build back better, we got to know what the word of the Lord has said. First of all, the word of the Lord, amen, has said in, in Zephaniah, amen, 3 and 19, uh, the Bible says that God removes our shame. Glory be to God. God removes our shame. He says here, I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. I would turn, listen, I, God says, I'm going to turn your, your shame into praise. Oh, God specializes in taking our mess and making a message out of it. God knows how to do it, praise God. He said, he promises in Zephaniah 3 and 19, I would turn their shame into praise. Mm -mm -mm. You've been to prison. God is going to turn your shame <laughs> into praise. You've been an ex-prostitute. God is going to turn your shame, come on, into uh, praise. Amen. You've been an ex uh, You've been, you know, you've been feeling like some folk have stigmas, uh, uh, you know, and they, and it's not an ex thing. It's you might have been ex, but there's some folk who are going through some stuff right now that they feeling too fat and too or too skinny. They feeling too black or they feeling too white. Uh, uh, they feeling uh, too tall or they feeling too skinny. These are stigmas. We are shame of some of these things. Uh, amen. There seems to be always something we need to fix in our lives, but God will still turn your current shame into praise. Amen. We need, we're going to always be building on something. We're going to always, but let us build back better. There are some things that we don't need to carry with us. There are some things that we need to cause to fall off of us because the next level, if God is going to be able to prosper us and increase us, we got to allow him to turn our shame, our stigma, as the scripture says, into praise. The scripture also says that supports what I'm talking about uh, in, in Isaiah, as, as, as uh, Isaiah 28 and 16, as Paul and Peter quotes this from the Old Testament. They quote, it says, whosoever believes in him will not be put to shame. That's what the scripture says. Whosoever believes in him would not be put to shame. Listen, people of God, since you are a believer in him, he said you won't even be put to shame. Your failures, you can't even, you need to fail your failures. Your, you can't even fail in him. You can't even fail in him. Biblical truth, amen. The Bible said all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. All things are going to work together for your good. God is going to turn your problems into praise. He's going to turn your predicaments into praise. He's going to turn your mess into a message. He's going to turn your stigmas and your shame, the stuff that you've done are still yet doing. He's going to bring praise out of it. And he's going to, amen, cause your shame to become honor. He says in, in the scriptures also says, it says Christ replaces our shame with honor. Christ re replaces our shame with honor. Children of God, hear me, hear me. All I'm saying is if you're building back better and you're going to be able to overcome, you need to, over, you need to know that he's already overcome. He's already overcame all of your stigmas, all of your shame, the prison stigma, come on, the divorce, the ex this, the ex that stigma, God, Jesus Christ has already nailed it to the cross 
and you need to just like, you need to just, amen, release, come on, those booster rockets. You know how when you're going up, praise God, you see these, these booster rockets fall off when you don't need them no more because there are some places that you're going, children of God. There are some places that you're going in your life, amen, that other people can't go. So you got to let Come on, some of the dead weight go. Let's uh, let you know so the thing that so easily besets you, the stuff that holds you down and holds you back. You might need to change your circle of friends. You might need to change some of your habits. You might need to change. Come on, some of your atmosphere issues. Come on, you. It's important that if we let go of some of these rocket boosters because where you're going is higher than they can go and then God is going to carry you further away where you need to go. God is God, the God that would turn your shame into success. He will use your pain and your shame in, and he will use it to bring praises and glory. The trial of your faith is much more precious than gold, though be tried with fire may become praise and glory and honor unto the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it is important for us to let go of the extra weight, let go of the shame, let go of the frustrations that frustrate your purpose. Let go of the stuff, amen, that the folk is trying to come against you. Satan is trying to come against you, amen, dust it all. Amen. Even though you have to go through the fiery furnace, you don't have to smell like smoke, children of God. Amen. You don't have to smell like smoke because Jesus is in the fire with you. He's in the fire with you. You don't have to live a life of shame. Amen. You don't have to live a life of defeat. The children of God. They did. They, they responded to the prophetic word. And they did three things. They reverenced God's word. In verse 12 of the same Haggai passage of scripture that I shared with you, they reverenced God. Haggai chapter one, uh, we see that they reverenced God's word in verse 12. They reverenced God's word. That's what they did. In verse 12, it's, they, they, they began, they feared, the Bible says, that the people, amen, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. You got to, amen, number one, you got to reverence his word, reverence his presence, get some worship in your ears, and they turned it around. And number two, they not only referenced his word, but they also responded to his word. It's one thing to reverence God's word. It's another thing to respond to God's word. They responded and said, hey, listen, you know what? I'm considering my way. I've been putting all this time and everything else I've been doing, fixing this and fixing that and responding to this. And I'm time for me to respond to God's word and begin, amen, to rebuild my temple, rebuild his temple. And, and, and the Bible says that, so the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month the second year of King Darius. They responded to God's word. And then they were reunited, reignited the enthusiasm. Amen. If nothing else that you do, we need to respond to his word, reverence his word, respond to his word, and reignite our enthusiasm in the Lord. You remember when you just had the joy of the Lord, you loved Jesus and in the Bible and got your devotionals and your prayer time. And, and man, these are the last days. It's time to tighten it up. It's time to tighten it up. Time to get back into worship. 
And we're getting ready, you know, we're getting ready to go back into weekly services. I believe there's going to be a day of Pentecost, like today is a day of Pentecost. I believe there's going to be such a movement of God. Amen. Especially in those prophetic rooms that we're going to set up, those word of knowledge rooms, uh, those uh, other people are going to get some practical, more, some practical things on their relationships. Other folk are going to be able to get their finances in order, their investments together. People are going to, even their businesses are going to be in power. We're going to have people, experts to come and help you with your businesses. Amen. There's going to be uh, an empowerment center the source at the source church and the empowerment center where people are going to be empowered. We're going to get rid, we're going to get rid of some of these things that have held us back too long. Aren't you tired and sick of being held back? Aren't you ready to live your best life now? All I'm saying is that respond to God's word. Amen. Reverence his word. Number one, respond to his word. Number three, reignite. Come on your enthusiasm in his word, in his life, in, in your Christian life. Build back better, but we got to overcome the stigmas. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. I hope the word has fallen on good ground. I pray that it has stirred their spirits, that they don't have to wait 18 years and procrastinate before they get to the place of victory in their Christian life. They can drop, Father, all of these booster rockets and move to the next level. Uh, Father God, we're not going to let the shame or the stigma or the discrediting or any of that, Father, to hold us back and say, you know, I, I can't make it. I've heard people say, I can't get a job because I'm a convict. I've heard people say that I, I can't move forward because they won't give me a place to stay. Mm -mm, not in Christ. God will use your shame and he will bring it into praise. And so we have to declare and decree that there's no shame in our game. And well, I want to, amen, right now in the name of Jesus, I want you to say that there's no shame in my game. Come on. And the game that you play is the game of life. And you got to say that there's no shame in my game, because there are there, there's really no shame, even though it hides out in your flesh, even though it becomes a part of your weaknesses. There's no shame in your game. If you if you reverence God's word and respond to God's word and reunite your enthusiasm in his word and get back out there and be that Christian that God has called you to be. Love you, appreciate you very much. And um, we, we, we can't wait to see you on the first Sunday. So mark your calendars, invite you, you know, start working on your connect three, building the kingdom, connect three to do like me, start working on people to start coming to church. Cause we finna hit it every week. And I can't wait to do it in person. How about you? God loves you. I love you, but God loves you more. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys in the chat. Appreciate you being very involved. I love reading your chats. In fact, I, I don't go a service without coming to the end of the service without, without going back and reading every last one of your chats because I don't get a chance to do it while I'm focusing on message. But I tell you what, thank you so much. I'm going to give many an opportunity to give. Don't forget to give. Don't forget to give to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't forgive. Don't forget to um to, to sow into the church. We're going we're gonna to need it to continue to buy the foods and help out the ministries. And, and, um, and I was talking about the foods for Sundays and bring key people to the church. So don't, don't um, uh, continue to give, continue to, um, you know, bless the Lord with your substances. Uh, we are being good stewards of it. Uh, we're uh, we're, we're, you know, we could stay, we could stay home and continue to zoom and do things like that. And people continue to come. Uh, but uh, we, we have to pay money to have a building. And so we want you to continue to, to give and continue to connect and continue to build. Um, I'm going to put that also, you know, if you guys hadn't put your information into our, um, our, uh, into, into our, um, database or fill out a connect card. I want to pray that you would do that. Amen. I want you to definitely um, 
fill out a connect card. Uh, again, you can also give uh, with uh, text to give the amount to 84321, 84321 to give. And um, I'm excited. And if anybody that is here, I don't want to assume that people already know the Lord. Um, I want to, I don't want to assume that. I want to assume that people know the Lord. And so I'm going to put out the post of salvation. If you have never accepted the Lord into your life, you never uh, have, have uh, been born again. Uh, and, and even if you made a decision in the past and you feel like it just, it didn't, I didn't change. I'm still the same. It's not going to hurt if you make that commitment. It, it, again, if you make that commitment, it's not going to hurt whatsoever. So I'm encouraging you to, you know, hit that raise hand if you want to be born again today. Father, I just pray for the loss. I pray that, Father, those who want to be born again, that they will take the first step and, uh, and that they will be, um, that they will let us know. They will let us know that they, they have chosen you so we can wrap our arms around them and show them the next steps. I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. So if you, um, if you, even if you've already born again, you're not sure about it, you need to speak to a spiritual life coach or um, need to speak to myself. Uh, what you want to do is you want to um, begin to text uh, God, God to uh, this number, uh, 855, 855, 85005. Amen. 85005. I'm going to put that in there, 85005. So you, if you text the, the name God, you know, to 85005, then we'll be able to um, connect with you because then we'll have your, your information to do so and we know to respond to you. Uh, if you need prayer or what have you, you, you can text 85. Um, to God to 85005. It's good to see Coach Pam Sherelle in the house. Amen. God bless you so much. Um, I oh, oh, okay. We're gonna be praying for your husband as well. Um hmm, he's fighting a good fight. Let's pray for Pat. Let's let's pray for Coach Um Sherelle, one of our certified life coaches. Let's pray for. Our husband, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we have seen you do mighty things, and we know that you're not done. Uh, Lord God, we, we've seen you raise the dead under our ministry, heal the sick and heal cancer and all kinds of diseases. Father, I pray for a special prayer for uh, Sherelle's husband. He's been fighting for his life. Father, give him a helping hand and get it done. Give him supernatural recovery and healing. And that's your, and, and Sister Sherelle, I'm believing, going to come back and testify of the work that you are doing even now. I pray that, Father God, that you, Lord, heal his body, take him off his deathbed, and put him on his life bed. Lord, we thank you for that, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, have a good, good uh, afternoon. Me and my daughter are going to, she's, she's sponsoring me to go to a basketball game. Uh, she figures her dad just works too much all the time. And so she wants to get me away from the norm and go see a basketball game. And what's, what's important about this particular basketball game is the Houston Rockets are where I'm from Houston. Going to play, be playing Atlanta. The Atlanta team, Amen. Atlanta, the and so we we uh, the Atlanta Hawks. I'm trying to get to remember what that was, and so we're going to spend some time together, father, father, daughter uh, experience here. She's sponsoring that for me, so um, hey, I'm going to have a good time. Y'all wish me a good time because I'm having a good time with my daughter, and we're going to have fun uh, watching the two teams. I don't know who I'm going to root for yet. I always root for the winning team, so I'll jump on that team. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You guys have a, uh, a good afternoon. Love you. God bless you.